so a very um, warm welcome to you uh, this evening for our Holy, um, sorry, for our Trinity Sunday um, service. I'm a little <laughs> nervous because I've got a new tech here and it's all set up and I think it's going to work fine. We'll see how we go. Anyway, thank you for joining, joining us today. So to begin, we are going to worship with that great song, Led Like a Lamb to the Slaughter. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Shall we say together the prayer of preparation? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to that point in the service where we bring to mind those things that we want to say sorry to God for, and just to know that God has a heart um, and is able to fully forgive us through Jesus Christ. So let's just pause in the quiet for a moment before we begin. We have too often Exchange the worship of the living God for idols of our own imagining as we gather to offer our praises to the holy and undivided Trinity and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us call to mind our sins. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, we now come to that point where we say the Gloria together. So let's repeat the words on the screen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we now pray our collect for today, this uh, Trinity Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we now come to our Bible readings. Um, and I'm thrilled to say that uh, the Old Testament is going to be brought to us by Sam Walsh. Uh, the New Testament is by Izzy Walsh. And the Gospel reading is by Christine Marsh. And then we will have uh, Anne's sermon. This is the reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 12 to 17 and 27 to 31. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or at his counsellor, 
instructed him. Whom did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my Lord? Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is a reading from the second letter of Paul the, to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. One God, who was, and who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I want to begin this morning by telling you a story and it might seem quite a sad story but I want to assure you that it does have a happy ending. We begin with a little boy whose mother has sadly died and his father invites an elderly aunt to live with them hoping that his son will achieve a lovely bond with his old aunt and that in some way that will make up for the loss of his mother. The old aunt arrives and the boy is dismayed. She's not his mum. The old aunt can't catch frogs. She knows nothing about fishing and she can't even play football. The bonding doesn't happen. So one night as the old aunt is shedding a few tears and talking to the boy's father. The boy overhears that the aunt has decided to go home and he suddenly feels quite frantic. He appeals to the aunt the next morning at breakfast. He appeals to his father. You can't let her go, he cries. She's hopeless. She can't catch a frog to save her life. She doesn't know how to load the, the worm onto a fish hook or even kick a ball. 
Dad, she needs us. As unlikely as it may seem, we all need each other and are called home and are sent out again in this week's readings. The first reading I want to turn to is the reading from Isaiah. You will probably know that he is the main prophet of the Bible who speaks to the nation words of God over a very long time, so long that it's believed to have been written by more than one person. Yet each one just as valid as the other as the voice of God for the wayward and disobedient nation of Judah, Israel. And our particular portion to look at speaks to the people who have been taken into exile in Babylon. A strange land, strange gods, strange ways. In these past days, everything has been strange for many of us. We have not been in the place we would choose to be. It has felt like exile. Who to turn to? The first few verses of our reading from Isaiah asks the question, Who measured out the waters and put in place the mountains? And of course, it was God. And then it asks the question, and who helped him? No one. He is the creator. Our God is so huge, even the nations are like a drop from a bucket. He is God who oversaw creation and all things past. He is God of the present, who knows everything now and is all powerful. And so God's people who have turned away from him and to him and away from him again are held in exile. And for good reasons, God allows these things to shape and form Israel. But he never left them without hope. In verse 31, which I commend to you for this week, it says, But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God is the God of the past, the present and very much the future. And in those different forms of relationship, past, present and future, he is revealed as the creator, the redeemer, the one who saves, and the sustainer, the one who will keep us going, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. 
This Sunday is Trinity Sunday, when we reflect on the completeness of God. The perfection of God in form, relationship and in meeting the needs of his most honoured creation, our very selves. So please, if you are feeling faint or weary, as if you were in exile, I pray that you will know the truth of verse 31 of chapter 40 of Isaiah. I pray that God will meet you intimately and lift up your spirit with his. Of course, the worst ex exile we can experience as creatures made by God is as those who are forced to be out of relationship with our creator, the one in whose image we are made, the one for whom we were created. Did you ever feel that? Before I became a Christian, I used to feel, from being about 14, feel that if I was a jigsaw puzzle, there would be a piece missing, right where I imagined my heart would be. A piece of the puzzle missing, a key piece of my life. I didn't know what it would look like or even what it was or what it meant. I just knew it was missing and it was in the space of my heart. Well, the complete, perfect Father, known in three ways as Father, the Creator, the Son who was our Saviour and the Holy Spirit who sustains us whilst being complex, is also stunningly simple. And when I met him, I understood he was the missing piece of the jigsaw of my life. I realised that as a child, I needed a father. As a wayward child, I needed a saviour. As a lost child, I needed a guide. God in his triune form fulfilled my every need. But he doesn't invite me to just receive from him. Our God, who is a community of three persons, but one God. He invites me to join him in his mission to transform our brokenness into healing, our exile into home. Having died for our sins, Jesus leaves his disciples with the Great Commission. His invitation to follow is followed up with a new command. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Having been exiled due to our sins, we're not just welcomed back into relationship with God as a child to his father. We are welcomed into a new relationship within the community of our God. In order to further that community by telling others... inviting them to be baptised too, that they might belong to Father, Son and Holy Spirit, that they might find their spiritual home, so that we can invite others and so on, and they will invite others into all the nations.
I think it looks a little bit like this. We enjoyed the meditation recently from Anne Watson on Rublev's icon that we can see here. And I just want to point you back to it again. When we accept God's invitation of forgiveness and leave the exile of sin and unforgiveness thanks to the saving work of Jesus, we can take our place at home, in the space at the table, where, under the loving gaze of the Father, we can be filled and equipped by the Holy Spirit to fulfil the Great Commission. Have you escaped exile, being away from God? Admitted to the sins that keep us away from God? Accepted that forgiveness and been welcomed home? Have you taken up your place fully at the table that is perfect love, that is home? A place to go back to regularly, to receive encouragement, blessing, guidance, correction and fullness of life as you play your part in sharing God's love in a largely lost world. Jesus said those words with authority, an authority he passed on to his friends with the assurance. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thanks to God's breath, which he fills us with regularly as we come to him, Jesus is with us, in us and works through us. No more exile, no more being apart. Our God's plan formed from the beginning is perfect and complete, involving all that he is and beckoning all that we are. The question is, will we go? So as we just take a moment to reflect on the words that Reverend Anne has shared with us, then let's just pause for a moment and then we'll pray. How has that message spoken to you? What is God trying to say to you through what Reverend Anne has shared? Lord God, thank you that you are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Thank you, God, that you are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you call us into relationship with you. There is a space at the table for us. Lord, we just pray that we will renew our strength in this season as we wait on you so we may soar like an eagle. Lord, we just thank you that you work within us to transform us. And Lord, help us to um, come into deeper relationship with you and to know that we are sent out by you, Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit with the backing of heaven. So we just thank you again, Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're now going to respond um, further to that message that Reverend Anne has given us by singing this beautiful hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me?
We come now to that point where we declare what we believe with the words of the creed which are on the screen. Shall we say these words together? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we now come to our intercessions. I'm delighted to say that the Reverend Mike Dixon is going to be bringing us our prayers. Welcome to the Intercessions and Prayers for Trinity Sunday from Mary and Mike Dixon. God has a body language known as Christ. So let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving make our requests to God. On this Trinity Sunday we have come before you Lord to offer our praise and adoration. You are God the Creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ the Saviour of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the Spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. The picture we have is of the icon of Rublev, one of the oldest icons, and it's an icon of the Holy Trinity. So let us, by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving, make our requests to God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. And at this time we think especially of the impact of the coronavirus on all of your world. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love, for your name's sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed, especially in the Middle East where there is war. And we give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith, love and service. We pray for our bishops, Paul and Sarah, and for the life of this parish in lockdown. For all those who serve you in this parish and seek to spread the good news of your gospel. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments and the fellowship of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this local community and for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young, for those returning to school, for those being schooled at home and the elderly especially those in our care homes here in Acliffe. For families locked together and all who are alone. And we give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, especially those suffering because of the virus. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, in their darkness be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember the sorrowful and bereaved who suffer alone. And in a moment's silence, we bring before you, Lord, all those who we personally ask God to care for. And we pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. 
you think of our hospitals at Darlington, James Cook, Durham, Bishop Auckland. All the carers in our homes and workers in our shops, doctors and nurses, anyone who we know. We ask for your protection. And at this time of the Trinity, we remember your creation. Lord of the universe, we praise you for your creation. You have provided humankind with everything it needs for life and health. Grant that the resources of the earth may neither be hoarded by the selfish nor squandered by the foolish, but that all may share your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember for, before God those who have died, and the candle is lit to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. We remember especially anybody that is personal to us who has recently died. And we give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, we ask you to lead us into the coming week. Help us to believe that you are close by us. Keep us from making mistakes and help us never to disappoint you. When we face the hard decisions or difficult work, when we enjoy ourselves and have fun with others, may we know that you share these times with us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning everybody, welcome to our active spiritual communion. The term spiritual communion has been used historically to describe the means of grace by which a person, prevented for some reason from sharing in the celebration of communion, nevertheless shares in the communion of Jesus Christ. And this form of prayer offers Christians an opportunity to give thanks for their communion with him particularly at times when they would normally have been present at a communion service. The church which we are members of, as we've discovered the last few months, is not part and defined by the walls of a building, but by the body of Christ. In making our communion spiritually, we are joining with Christians everywhere to be nourished by the one who tells us, I am the bread of life. Now you may want to find a place that's quiet, you may want to get yourself a cross or a candle. You might choose to pause this now and wait for a particular time of the day. And as we, as we go on, reflect on what have been good today, what's God said to you today, where have I fallen short? What might I do tomorrow? So we'll just pause now for a moment or two to be quiet. And if you want, you could pause the video and get yourself settled with a cross or a candle in a special place. And we'll begin in a moment or two. We begin with the peace. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We say together what we say, the preparation, prayer for preparation of the table. Holy God. Holy and strong, 
holy and immortal. Give us the bread of everlasting life. Make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, the Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty, and so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this. In remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of your redemption. And as we offer you our praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this wine. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Gather into one your kingdom who share in one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, through Je by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Praying for the unity of all people, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And as we take part in this act of spiritual communion, let's just pause. And as I said before, think about the day. What good things have come from God today. And we say together, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits that you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Almighty God, you have received, revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all our ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory. For in three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say together the prayer after our spiritual communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. And a final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of love and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And we're going to finish our spiritual communion now with a piece of music. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>